Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I have some Opposites Attract Romance Recommendations. These are romances where the two people in the couple are like almost completely opposite and somehow they fall in love with each other. Whether it be what they're interested in or their personalities or their jobs, they're just opposites um but they can't help but fall in love with each other i think these are amazing books and i think they have like fantastic banter in them as well opposites attract romances a plus banter for sure so let's get into these recommendations first i have battle royal by lucy parker this is a baking romance our heroine and hero are bakers and they own bakeries across the street from each other but they are very different if you can see on the cover, hers is like unicorns, colors, bright things, and his are all like white, pristine cakes. So even in the cakes that they make, they are complete opposites. So her whole bakery is bright and fun and colorful, and his is very pristine and white. He is actually very like prolific. Bakery comes from a long line of professional bakers in um, Britain. He is one of the uh, hosts of kind of like a great British baking show. She used to be one of the contestants and that's how she like got her fame and she was one of the contestants, but one of her cakes like blew up in her, in, in his face, in both of their faces. Um, and she got eliminated, but uh, she get, still got like a baking gig and a bakery after that. So these two have been tasked, kind of like put up against each other to see who can make the best royal wedding cake for like a trial run for the royal wedding. Um, so the two royals getting married can figure out what kind of cake they would like. Um, so the two of them are trying to do a bunch of research to figure out what cake to make. <laughs> this book is so stinking fun. Um, very unique too. Uh, both characters are older than what you would normally see in a contemporary romance. Like he even has like graying hairs. So I really enjoyed this one. And um, I think it's like the epitome of an opposites attract romance. Next is Lizzie Blake's Best Mistake by Maisie Eddings. This is about Rake and Lizzie and they have a one night situation together that leads into something they never really expected. Uh, Lizzie ends up pregnant and uh, she doesn't really know what to do with her life anymore. She didn't really know in the first place, but especially now that she has this baby that she wants desperately. She then calls up Rake to tell him the news. He actually lives in Australia, he's Australian. Um, and he was in the US when they were like together on a business trip. Um, so he's actually from Australia and he literally drops everything to go be with Lizzie, moves to America to go help Lizzie and be with her and this baby. I absolutely love how patient and caring and kind this man is. Like, I love it. Lizzie in here has ADHD and I absolutely loved that representation. It was done so well. The opposite to Tract is very interesting. Lizzie is very loud and a little chaotic at times but really, really, really fun. And she does not care what other people think of her. But then you have Rick on the other hand, who likes things to be organized and clean and um, is more soft-spoken than Lizzie. So it takes a little bit getting used to their dynamics together because at one point in the book, they do move in together, but it's a beautiful, beautiful romance story. Next is Sweet Talk by Cara Bastone. This is an audible, plus book so if you have an audible subscription you can listen to this book for free i don't know if they have print copies i would love a print copy um but i haven't really looked at that but i did listen to this as an audiobook our heroine here lives in this apartment complex and he's texting his sister something that he needs or just like a random text message and he uses um like speech to text the speech to text feature because he has dyslexia and he sometimes um, text the wrong thing so he just voice memos or uh, sends text to speech or speech to text sorry messages to people but he ends up sending what he sent to the wrong person in his contacts instead of a sister he ends up sending it to someone else he doesn't really know who this person is he has the name under something he does not remember whatsoever so this is about him trying to figure out who this person is that he's texting because they know who he is and they have like phone calls together and banter filled conversations. And I can't really tell you the opposites attract part because that would like spoil it, I think. Um, but it is opposites attract in the fact like he is um, a businessman, he um, is a little shy, um, more reserved, and you can kind of guess who 
his opposite would be. Um, but I really, really, really love this one. It's one of my favorite Karma Stone books. Then I have Delilah Green Doesn't Care by Ashley Hang Blake. You can even see on the cover that these two are opposites, but like, it's so stinking cute. I love this one. This is about Delilah and Claire. And uh, Delilah ends up coming back to the small town that she grew up in with her dad, stepmother, and stepsister Astrid um, because her stepsister Astrid is getting married and she asked Delilah to take pictures of their wedding. She doesn't really get along with Astrid and her stepmother. Um, they're kind of estranged because she felt like she didn't really belong in their family and she was ostracized from them. Um, and so she is really shocked when one of Astrid's best friends, Claire, hits on her at a bar. Um, and then she realizes that Claire does not recognize her as Astrid's sister. That's like the spark of their relationship um, when they first meet again after all these years. But then they start something up. They keep it on the DL because they don't want to um, bug Astrid or have Astrid be mad because apparently she's not the biggest fan of Delilah. But they cannot help themselves. They cannot keep their hands off of each other. Claire in here is a single mom and I love her style so much. It's definitely like my type of style. Um, and Delilah is like a free spirit traveler who is also a photographer. Um, so they lead like completely different lives. Speaking of Astrid, Astrid Parker Doesn't Fail by Ashley Hang Blake is also opposites attract. So Astrid in here, um, you could have guessed maybe from the fact that there's a book about her, but the wedding that she had doesn't really happen in book one. Don't worry, the guy sucks, so it's completely fine. <laughs> this is a romance with one of the people who is helping her renovate this house for a reality TV show. They bicker, they banter, they don't really get along. Astrid is very straight-laced and um, pristine, and um, her love interest in here is kind of the opposite, um, more of a free spirit, um, come as you go. They don't really see eye to eye at first, but they do fall in love. <laughs> they do fall in love. I don't want to spoil this book, okay? Um, it's a really fun book. If you're wanting like, a great sapphic romance series with opposites tracked, I definitely recommend this series by Ashley Herring Blake. Next I have Glitterland by Alexis Hall. This is about Ash and Darian. And Ash in here is broody as they come, as broody as they come. Um, he like wears black head to toe. He has black hair. He writes angsty things. I think he's an author. Um, and then one night at a club, he ends up across Darian, who is the complete and total opposite. He is a chatterbox, wears glitter all the time, has this very iconic orange spray tan on. <laughs> and Ash finds him to be the only person that has been able to make him laugh in years. And he cannot get enough of his presence. So just hearing about their dynamic and what they're like, like I didn't really see at first that their romance was gonna be this epic thing, but it totally, totally was. This is definitely an opposite tract romance that works. Next, I have The Mistletoe Motive by Chloe Lisa. This is her like christmas -y set romance. Um, you don't have to read it during the Christmas season if you don't want to. I don't think I did. I think I read this in the middle of the year or something last year. But our hero and heroine here work at a bookstore, the Baileys bookstore. And the Baileys, the old couple who owns the shop, ends up telling them that they're gonna have to possibly let someone go because they can't afford them. They're not getting a lot of as much business as they would like and they might have to close down the shop. The two of them form a bet, if you will, Whoever can sell the most books wins the loser, like by Christmas time, the loser has to resign from working there. The two of them are bickering and bantering all the time and uh, they don't get along really, they don't. But with this competition, they have to spend more time together and they realize like the things they maybe thought about the other person weren't necessarily all that true. There's great representation here, the heroine is autistic and the hero has type one diabetes. So if you want books with great rep, look no further than a Chloe Lisa book. A novella that I have is I've Walked Where You've Been by Marina Vavankos. So in this version of our world, there are soulmates. And when you look into their eyes for the first time, like a bond links between them and they cannot be far away from each other distance wise without like feeling completely Ill, like it's dangerous to be away from your soulmate. So what happens between Maddie and Ethan is a complete anomaly. Their bond starts from the age of nine. So they are crossing the street one day, they look at each other and the bond like snaps into place 
and they can't be far away from each other for a long period of time. They're forced to be around each other even though they don't like the other person whatsoever. They're pretty much opposites in every way possible. One loves to be outside and play sports and the other one loves to sit inside with a good book. Um, that's just one of the many ways that they're opposites, um, but this book takes place throughout the years when they turn from rivals to lovers. This was so cute. I loved seeing their progression of like growing up and loving each other like throughout the years. Like I thought it was great. And the aspects of them that are completely opposite definitely added to their dynamic that was like beautiful. Next I have Big Biker by Cassie Mint, to Cassie Mint novella, I had to mention it. This is the romance between Samson and Ivy. Ivy is the daughter of a well-off rich man who has like tasked his daughter to become a socialite herself. He wants to marry her off as basically kind of like a business deal. Then Ivy meets Samson. Samson is this big bad biker dude who comes up on his motorcycle dressed up all in black and leather and Ivy is like gobsmacked by him. He has a sight set on Ivy and will do anything to make her his even if that means digging up some dangerous dirt on her father. So they are really opposites. Um, Ivy's a little bit naive and doesn't know the way of the world. She comes from a rich lifestyle and Samson is the complete opposite. <laughs> so if you're running a novella, Look no further. And the last one that I have for you is a historical. This is A Nun for the Viking Warrior by Lucy Morris. This is, I think it's, this one is my favorite Lucy Morris book. I really enjoyed it. Our heroine in here has lived kind of a not great life under the roof of her father. Her father was abusive and she has never wanted to be under the thumb of a man like ever again. And she never wanted to get married, so she decided to become a nun. But like the night before she's gonna take her vows, Amy, the heroine in here, um, is shocked to find a jurand, a Viking dude, knocking down, almost knocking down the doors to the nunnery she lives in to get her. They don't know each other, but her father basically promised her in marriage and they have to get married. This is definitely a slow, passionate read. It's great. There are complete opposites in like every way. He is this like strong, experienced, like big buff Viking dude. And she's this small woman who does not know a lot about the world, but she is very kind and loving and patient. This is a great historical. If you have not read it yet, please do. The Viking aspect in here, 10 out of 10 recommend. Anyways, there you have it. Those are 10 romance recommendations with the opposites attract trope. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And please let me know if you have any recommendations. Um, if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me, let's do the sun emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I'll see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.